Here's a, a memorable studio moment. Touch of Jazz was um, a production company that DJ Jazz and Jeff started up in the late 90s um, and the early 2000s. He had four to five studio rooms in his, uh, in his building in Philadelphia. And really, he stocked it up with toys galore. I mean, Fender Roses, live drum machines, bongos, MP drum machine, everything you could possibly imagine. And even back then, we were using, I think, Logic. Like, it was unheard of that you were recording digitally back then. It was unheard of. Each room would be stuffed with producers, man, and singers and artists. And that was where I really, my artistry really got developed. The beauty of it also, man, I, I, I had to speak on it, is Jeff wasn't really tripping on like how much success you brought from it. Every once that's why Will Smith will come down and we all kind of, the luxury of it, we all got a chance to work on Will Smith records and his movie sound soundtracks. But there were nights where like, we just tried to make the live kick drum sound like the MP kick, you know? And it's like, yo, hit it again. Boom, boom, boom. I hit it. Doom, doom, doom. Add another pillow. All right, cool. Yeah, no, so hit it again. Boom, boom, boom. I hit it. Boom, boom, boom. Is it cold? No, no, move the mic. You know, we hung a mic in the middle of the room and sat in the corner to, to make natural reverbs. It's like nights are just really figuring out artistry, you know? And that was the room that, you know, really a lot of the Philadelphia movement, the second wave, you know, the, of the 90s where the, the Jill Scotts, the, the music soul child, the Vivian Green, Floor Tree, that whole stuff kind of came from, from all the work we put in in those studios. If you could ever be in Jazzy Jeff's studio with his crates surrounding him and Jazzy Jeff on the turntables, it is like if you could imagine Michael Jordan in his backyard on his own court or the best chef in the world in his own kitchen. And it was like, we, one day we were talking about hip hop and just going through like the amazing beauty of hip hop. He got so hyped that he just jumped up while we was talking. And it's crazy, he had no headphones, nothing. And he's not even re he's not even looking, he's reaching, pulling out vinyl. He's like, man, this was the first record that got me hyped. He put the needle down, I'm talking right on, blah. God, God, God. And he's like, yo, that joint was crazy. And he's, I mean, he's reaching just for stuff. He knows the stuff so crazy. He's throwing it on. We're talking about no digital stuff at all, just straight mixing board turntable. And we sat there for like four hours. And he's going in maybe like 16 bars per song. This alright. Yo, all right. And man, what about man? What about when Run DMC came in? And as fast as he could even say it, he's scratching it in. And we we were all just sitting there like. I mean, for like four hours straight, you know what I mean? And then like maybe like six months later, he did that with like R&B soul music. Like just one day, like five hours straight of him just DJing for only like three people in the room. That was like the highest musical moment I could ever possibly, you know, explain. Like just see somebody who is the top of their game in their element, in their own, on their own instrument, just a private, private concert. That, that's, that was like, to this day, I remember I was a kid in a candy store. Like I remember that day like it was yesterday. You know, it's crazy. Me and Jeff, we only see each other at airports now, man. You know, he mixed a lot. He mixed a couple of records on my last album. And even then I, I, I was torn, I was running crazy. So I couldn't even make it to the studio when he was mixing them. But yeah, I, I run into him. I run to enough times at the airport that we don't even trip that I had to try to come over to each other's house. Like it's like it's almost a normal that now to see him. You, he lives in now, you know, near Philly. I live near Philly. We all fly to Philly every airport, so we run into each other a lot. Just like basically get naked and shake it, and you can be cool. Like this has actually been said to me. He's trying to fix the microphone for him, and boom, Stevie goes, "Oh man!" And there's blood running down his mouth. I was holding his leg pressing his, his, his uh, back leg when he was supposed to sing. You know, I had lost everything. You know, the next step for me was death or, or, uh, or incarceration.